Ah, look, right on time. It looks like Dr. Pierre is signing in. So let's let's go ahead and take advantage of the timeliness of that. Dr. Pierre, good morning to you. And thank you for joining me and us in this uh, live coverage of the uh, Solidarity Rally and uh, that 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 Black Alliance for Peace is is uh, wrapping up or has now wrapped up. Um, among many other things, Dr. Pierre, by the way, for those who are not aware, is a professor in the Department of African American Studies and Anthropology at UCLA and the author of many things, uh, uh, including a, a book I'm still working my way through, and, and I'm excited to invite her back to discuss at some point, uh, The Predicament of Blackness, Post-Colonial Ghana and the Politics of Race. Uh, so so I can't wait to have that discussion uh, another time. But but Dr. Pierre also serves as, I believe it's the an international, cor- not correspondent, but coordinator for Black Alliance for Peace. Is that also no, I, part of I'm your... Part of- and I'm I'm part of the I'm a member of the Africa team and now um, the Haiti team. So we have okay. Two teams, yeah. Awesome. Sorry about that. Thank yeah, you very US much for of, that. US out of Africa team. Yeah. So so well so let's start there then, if you would the with the the Haitian portion of that obviously with what's going on with the rally today. Uh, what are your thoughts about the need for such uh, rallies and and what the goals should be? And then uh, I'd love to hear how you connect that to your uh, out of Africa campaign work or how you see those two campaigns intersecting. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think, you know, the U.S. is responsible for the complete destabilization of Haitian democracy and the complete loss of Haitian sovereignty over at least since, you know, from, 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 from a long time ago, but at least since 2004. And I think as responsible citizens who should, especially as black people living in the heart of empire, it is our responsibility to actually force the empire to contend with our own dissatisfaction with their imperial machinations outside of the U.S. And I think it's our responsibility as Black people to support, you know, the fight for sovereignty and liberation elsewhere. And so, um, so that I think that's where we're coming from. I do think part of it is, um, you know, Haiti is has lost its sovereignty, and people won't tell you this. We're under occupation since. A formal occupation, this latest one since 2004, since um, you, the U.S. led U.S., Canada, France led coup d'état against you know a popular president that was um, elected, and um, and so 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 we do that. What we want to focus on is actually the imperial machinations because there are four, there are three major groups that make all the decisions in Haiti that pay for everything, that pay for elections, that do all kinds of things. And, and I think it's easy to focus on this black dictator in the making, right? As opposed to thinking about how it is that the US, the Organization of American States, which actually is controlled by the US and Canada, and then the United Nations, which has had Haiti under occupation since 2004, what is their, you know, what is their role? These major Western, white Western powers, what is their role in Haiti? And how are they continuously supporting dictators, destabilizing democracy, and completely ridding the country of its sovereignty? And so I think that's what we wanted. And I think our next move is to actually protest against, you know, the OAS, against the UN occupation, and then against the US, right? And I think this is connected directly to our U.S. out of Africa campaign because it's ultimately an anti-imperialist campaign, right? And, and the fact that you have the U.S. military all over the continent, right? You know, and we know our brother Obama, you know, is really the, the catalyst for, you know, is making AFRICOM, AFRICOM, which is the Africa command, making it stick on the continent because George Bush couldn't get anybody to, to do it, but Obama came in as the brother that he is, brother. And, um, and did it right, and so, and so part of it for me is is about having, you know, this met, you know, for, forcing, pushing empire from within, and that's our job. We have the responsibility because we are in the heart of empire to fight against empire because the people outside are suffering. They're trying to live and survive, and 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 I actually think there should be protests all over the country about about what the U.S. and the U.N. and the OAS are doing in Haiti. You know. Same as, you know, the same way that I think we should have protests against the bombing of Syria. But, you know, I do think we have a responsibility, you know, is that. 
Um, forgive this detour, but could is there something you could share about that beautiful piece of art hanging behind you that seems <laughs> it seems relevant to the discussion from what I can tell, but but yeah, I, I, it's I, a, I've, yeah, it's, it's the Haitian Vodou flag, Ogun, and it's handmade. You can tell every single one of these little um, things were sewn in, and I've had it for about twenty years, and um, I got it um, from this um, um, uh, this artist retreat place in Haiti a long time ago. But yeah, isn't it beautiful? It's a Vodou flag. It, it, yeah. it, it really is. Yeah, sorry, I I, I was. Yeah. A little bit positively. I thought that was better than books, you know, <laughs> behind me. It is. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, it, it does quite well. Uh, um, uh, by the way, this, the, the, the you know, I, you, you brought it up. I mean, I did, it, I think there is a connection to be made between the current administration's willingness uh, or ability to find the resources and the time and the energy and the focus and the policy development to, to the extent that there was any to, to bomb Syria while uh, not only uh, continuing to support, as you said, the dictator in the making in Haiti, but the the ramping up of AFRICOM throughout the continent of Africa and even the in, 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 you know uh, increased policing uh, of, of black people, so-called citizens here. Uh, and someone in the in the comments did raise uh, says that uh, you know well I'll just pull it. it says no disrespect intended but the whole melanated planet is under uh, occupation. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, uh, um, so I don't know if I'm just asking you to to repeat yourself or if there's if there is more to say about that connection, uh, um, this this encirclement. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, um, anyway. Well, there, there's definitely yeah. a lot to say. I mean, it is. U.S. empire is actually crazy, right? I mean, the last time we could say, you know, the sun never sets on an empire was when the mm. British ruled the world, right? Um, and so, and I feel, you know, I think that we're almost there, right? Especially the encirclement of Asia, you know, and then the attempt. Because the other thing, actually, I, I, to detour a bit, What's happening in Venezuela, we have to really pay attention to, right? Because the first thing uh, uh, Biden did before he even became inaugurated was recognize some dude that wasn't even elected, right? Like Juan Guaido, right? <laughs> As the president of Venezuela, right? And that, that's the first thing he does, right? And so part of that is to think about the continuation of US foreign policy in um, around the world and that Biden does that, but also when it comes to black countries, because the other, the second thing that Biden allowed was the continued deportation of Haitians. So within the first month, there have been I think almost thirty or forty thousand Haitian, you know, Haitian refugees and immigrants deported, right? So we think about that, but we also think about the continuation of the funding of the U.S. military police. The other thing that the U.S. did that we no one's talked about, they brought in the Colombian police to work with the Haitian police to control Haiti. So this was announced by the US embassy last week. Now, you know, Colombia is, is under right-wing government and is brutal towards its people. And so you think about, okay, so of all the things that you can help this so-called poor country, right? What do, you, what do you do? You build prisons, you arm their military, and then you bring in another worse country's military, to, you know, police to come in and subvert and subvert black sovereignty. And so, so I do think there's that. I do think there's something about U.S. imperialism that, as it's reaching its end, because that's what it is, right? It's just there. It's the last gaps, you know. As it's reaching its end, it's going to wreak havoc all over the world, and we already see it in terms of, you know, all the propaganda against China, the build of the military against China, the attempt to take the oil in Syria. You know, at least Trump said, you know, we're we're taking the oil. We've got it. Biden Bomb is just, the oil, take the oil. Right. And, and you know, the war in Syria has been illegal from the very beginning. You know, that was Obama. You know, Obama got into this when long before, you know, we had no reason to be bombing Syria, you know. And so so I do think I do think there's a link as we're spending all this money, wasting all these money, uh, all this all these billions and trillions of dollars killing people. You cannot provide a fifteen dollar wage. You know, you 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 want to give the police here more money. You don't give health care. You don't give student relief. You don't do anything, right? And so we have to ask ourselves, 
why is it that the U.S. is more interested in, in bombing and subverting democracy elsewhere than to taking care of its people? And, and I think as Black people, we have a responsibility to stop paying fealty, you know, to, to stop supporting this U.S. government. It's not good for you. It's not good for any of us. And if you have U.S. imperialism abroad and impacting Black people abroad, it will come back home. It always comes back home. You know, drone warfare, the police, it always comes back home to us. And so we have to be very careful and be very clear and specific about what we want to do. And, and it's about getting rid of U.S. imperialism. The, 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 that Dr. King line, the, the, the bombs that drop overseas explode at home. Exactly. Um, they always come home. They always come home to us. And we have to we have to remember that. We have to remember that. And, you know, the U.S. government has never been for black people. It was it was not meant for us. And I, and I hope we recognize that, you know, and, and, and fight against it and look for each other. And the other thing is I also I'm, I know I'm going on and on, but no, please go ahead. Is, the other thing I wanted to say is we've always in this country and elsewhere depended on connections with black people abroad. Right. We have always wanted we've always depended on support from black people abroad. And I think we need to give support. Well, because there's no way within this world that is globally dominated by white people and the white powers. There's no way we can do anything within the nation framework, right? We have to be global and we have to see, we have to go back to the way that we saw colonialism, right? Because right now we, it's still a colonialism, but it's neo-colonialism all over the African continent, the Caribbean, Latin America. So we have to go back to these moments where we see ourselves in this country as an internal colony within this empire and then reach out to other people who are suffering from neo-colonialism. Yeah, I, I forgive me for doing this, but but I, I, I I'm I'm in some way selfishly just looking for your help on this because I don't like I don't like my responses at all to this question or these questions. But but I, I, when you say, for instance, that it's it's the responsibility or you, you feel that it's the responsibility of black people to hear or elsewhere to feel a concern for black people elsewhere, how do you convey that? maybe to the people you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, your students, maybe, I don't know, like, um, you, for instance, you know, it, who understandably in many cases are struggling to look beyond their own neighborhoods uh, to, to, to under, you know, in, in terms of, you know, dealing with the, the, um, uh, I don't know, the, the, the vagaries of, of, of oppression and, and, you know, in their own lives, how, so how do you ask people in, or, or what value to their own lives do you think it brings to, to say sort of if you could just lift your head up a little bit higher to see beyond that immediate horizon to other black people suffering as well, uh, whose support, you, you know, you would benefit from and vice versa. Um, I don't know. How do you other than maybe, you know, like joining organizations like Black Alliance for Peace, et cetera, you know, uh, how how. How do you encourage people to see it, to, to, to under, I don't know, to, to, to no, recognize that importance? It's an important question because you always, I always get, well, we're struggling here and we're, you know, we don't have time, you know, we're trying to eat and I get it, right? We're trying to eat and we don't have time to, to think about what's going on um, in Haiti or in Uganda or, you know, um, all of the continent or in Venezuela, but think about it this way. So why is it that all the money that can support the U.S. citizens is you being used to bomb other places to go elsewhere? Like, so first of all, you you know, the U.S. state is a racist state. It was born as a racist state. It will always be a racist state and we will never be fully full citizens in this country. So let's be clear on that. And I know people have been holding out hope that the U.S. will accept black people. Let me get you, you know, get get out of that one. Right. So so there's that. Right. So, but the other thing is, it is important to point out to people that it has always been international solidarity that's helped us, right? And so I think, for example, the example I give when I teach is, you know, in the 50s and 60s, as African nations were becoming independent, and people in the U.S. were still under Jim Crow, right? Um, and then you had, and I, in, and I know you're in D.C., so I, you know, I used to talk to old Africans when I was doing research in D.C., um, who came during the 50s and 60s who would say, you know, when they got there, the white people would tell them, stay away from the black people and so on and so forth. But the other thing, what they would say also is that the U.S. was embarrassed by the fact, by, by what it thought that Africans might re report 
to about them outside, right? So one of the things that actually sped up the um, you know um, um, uh, segrega uh, desegregation was the fact that you had all these African um, diplomats walking around D.C., Baltimore, Maryland, getting treated <laughs> in similar ways as African Americans, getting mistaken for African Americans. And then the U.S. not in the propaganda being used by Russia and China against U.S. racism because the U.S. was so afraid of losing, you know, the, the war to, you know, the propaganda war to the Soviets or to socialism and communism. So it, it, it hastened desegregation, right? In addition, of course, to, to protest. And of course, we can never downplay protest. But I do think there is something to be said about the fact that this is a nation that does not accept its Black people. And so if we if we start with that basis, then we have to know that if we make connections, then it makes it makes it really um, it really um, would help us in the long run, because then you have you have help outside. Right. And we have to think about all our leaders. I mean, think about Malcolm X, you know, and think about the people. Think about even the Black Panthers and their solidarity networks. Right. You know, to, from Palestine to Tanzania. So we have to think about the fact that black people have always depended on solidarity across nations, understanding that the nation, the nation state doesn't help us. And so I know it's a long winded way to, to answer. And it is something I think we do need to, those of us in the US to really come up with a very good set of, a, a good language to explain to people who are struggling every day to see how you know, their oppression is linked to oppression of black people abroad. But the thing I have to also say is like, look how black people are treated everywhere. Like how many Africans drown in the Mediterranean, right? That nobody says anything about, right? How about, how many times does a US drone bomb a Somali, you know, a Somali town, right? How many Somalis have died, right? And so part of that is we have to remember that these things matter uh, and, and that we are black people, but we also black people with very long histories of internationalism. Yeah, I agree with our, our comrade here, Netfa. Uh, well, Leah also, Soda, uh, hashtag Soda, Solidarity of Dispersed Africans. And then, of course, uh, treatment of Black people within US, the U.S. explains U.S. foreign policy. Uh, you know, as Malcolm said, the police do locally what the military does internationally. Right. You, know, you can't understand yeah. Mississippi if you don't understand the Congo. All of those things still work. They do. But and you just to remember. Yeah. When the U.S. first occupied Haiti in 1915, it sent soldiers from the South, from the segregated South. And the racism of these soldiers against the Haitians, you know, the, the thousands of people killed and forced into labor camps. I mean, that's, you know, that's that's what we that's what this country, not we, that's what this country exports. Right. Yeah. And if they hate you here. They hate black people elsewhere, too. You know, yeah. and it's your the other thing is it's your tax dollars. It is your tax money going to like destabilize Haiti and bombing Somalia. So we have to. Yeah, I mean, that's that. what I, I, I do. I even sometimes just encourage the, my version of what Dr. John Henry Clark used to call the essential selfishness of survival and saying, listen, you know, you could just simply you know, the argument could just simply it's not about, you know, I personally have to love every Haitian or, or Ugandan or anything, you know. We're not asking for some blind, you know, hand holding silliness. We're talking about you. It could be just just tactically even and saying, you know, you could redistribute our tax dollars back to give us national free health care. And then just by that alone, you you deplete the resources being used to bomb all these other people. Right. Uh, right. Anyway, Dr. Pierre, listen, we, we, we do have to go. But but I, as I said, I, I, I really do look forward to what I'm just going to keep. Uh, putting out there positively into the universe is our forthcoming conversation, more specifically about your 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 scholarship, um, which I which I um, uh, am, am slowly catching up to and loving every minute of. So so anyway, so many questions uh, that I, I can't wait to get to that. But but thank you for this and thank you for for jumping on uh, sort of last minute uh, uh, and helping us do this coverage of of. Uh, BAPS rally today. Thank you for, yeah, for the context. Yeah. All right. No compromise, you know, no compromise, no retreat. You know, that's, that's how, it. That, that's it. That's right. That's how that's right. No <laughs> compromise, no retreat. No, no anytime. And more, more in the future. Look forward to it. Take care of yourself. All right. You too. All right. Bye -bye. All right.